let's go. While I was pitching these ideas, you know, like I had Mike's idea. I had another friend from college who we did mm -hmm. a short film together and mm -hmm. we were trying to make it into a feature. I had, and then, you know, they, they always told me in film school, just don't have one idea. You know, don't, don't try. I know you love that feature, but don't go there and try to just make just that feature because they're going to say, okay, cool. Sounds great. What else do you have? They want to see that you're versatile, you know, and like, oh, I have this action film. I have this horror film and I have this comedy. Um, give them something because you never know what company or what, you know, producer is looking for. Uh, what are they, you know, what's it's going to work for them in their slate. Uh, so what happened was at my time, I think that's when faith based films were starting to kind of like make a surprise, you know, um, with like their their returns and everything. And so I had a few ideas and then I had one idea, which was a faith based film, which I wrote during one of my electives as a creative producer. Um, and it was not the best like you know it was a first draft i just had it done but i just wanted to have it as an option mm -hmm. in my stack of of concepts that i'm pitching mm -hmm. in my you know meetings so what happened was that did happen some people were like okay we're not looking for this right now we're not looking for this this is interesting what's this about and then i was like well oh crap that's something i wrote in college okay <laughs> let me pitch it yeah and and i actually had i actually had the mo uh, a few people want that idea over the other ones i actually put in front Right. That was just like the backup, like the third, the third backup. And it was mine. It was one that I wrote. And uh, I had a proof. Who, what's, who has a quote? Sorry. Uh, somebody has the quote that, oh, I think it was uh, either Quentin Tarantino or Martin Scorsese. I think the, the best stories are the most personal. Yeah. Or something like that. So I think yeah. you put this, your idea that basically you were the most passionate and you were the most in love with or came th from you. Well, it was like... I didn't really know anything was going to happen with it. And I was you put it on the back burner, but then yeah. it was like what yeah. everybody ended up. So what was, what was that, 100 yards? Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was, um, like, when you're in film school, like, other than, other than doing your, um, like, as a producer, other than producing short films uh, with the other majors, what you're doing mostly is you're learning how to develop a pitch package. You're learning, like, in one class, you're learning how to do the pitch package, like, mm -hmm. how, to, how to create create and design it another one is like you know how would you structure a finance deal like in a finance class and they always say like oh come up with an idea and do it and so i didn't come up with different ideas for each class i just had this one idea i was just like oh i really liked it in my screenwriting class who was uh my professor was michael schiffer he's the screenwriter of uh colors lean on me um call of duty he's written mo multiple games and uh but he helped me in that class. We had to create the first act of our script. And so he helped me create the first act. And then I got from there on another class and finished the script where the final pro the final thesis was to v deliver a f uh, you know, final script. So I had that. And then in, in the other class, the final thesis was like develop the package. So it was already all packaged mm -hmm. from all the other classes. And I didn't really do it out of passion. I did it just because it was just easy for me to just use that one idea. And I loved it. Like creating it was was you know it made me happy and everything but i didn't ever think anything was going to happen with it you know it was more of a, a project like to yeah like but a, now you're in the like a hobby singapore film market yeah and everybody's like what's that and then people are bidding on it <laughs> they're like okay well if you can turn this into uh instead of it it was you know it's a drama about a football player who is a recovering from cancer instead of football you know can since we're going to be in singapore over here can we make him a musician I was like, okay, maybe. And then another person was like, oh, could it be this or could it be that? Or could we take the faith-based element out of it and just make it like, you know, this? And then there was just one company that was just like, no, I love the idea that you created. Could we just keep this story but figure out a way to shoot it in the Philippines? And I was like, yeah, that's great. And they also offered me the best deal. Uh, they offered me a job with the company. They offered to uh, option the, the rights to it and keep me as a creative on it and not just buy me out and take the idea. Uh, so I stayed with that. I well, you ended up directing the movie, right? Yeah, and that was a process too because we were looking into directors. Um, we were I was even looking into other writers to do punch-ups because I was, in my mind, and the way I was taught at Chapman, I'm just the producer. Even though they taught me the creative side in every other aspect, I think it was just not just the prof not professors, but just the mentality of like, oh, when you're a producer, that's all you can do, you know, because that's all some other people ever did. Um, mm. Nobody actually were optimistic enough to kind of go out and do more. Um, so after I did all the producing on it and we were trying to look at directors and we we're doing bids and stuff like that, 
Um, and people were like, you know, we're trying to make it for like a million dollar budget. Mm hmm. And we're trying to shoot in the Philippines. They didn't tell you, right, that it was a million dollar movie. You actually didn't know. I think you told me that you found out later that it was a million dollar movie. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it was, it was, we were trying to raise a million dollars and we got close to that. But what did it, uh, uh, but didn't it end up costing some, like, wasn't it, I, was that a different movie? I, 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 I vaguely remember you telling me s uh, one day something about, like, oh, yeah, like. Probably another production. Another production? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It was like it was going to uh, be like a three hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollar movie, and then I think yeah. Sherman was involved with Hundred Yards, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, just for that, like. So now they're bidding. You're still there. Is this the yeah. first week? Your first time in Singapore still? Well, it was it was a couple trips. There was one trip where I was out there and I met people, and then I, I I met I met these people. And I really liked them, and I really liked what they had to say. But you always got to follow up. And then sometimes, you know, you can send emails, you can do phone calls. And uh, the best thing to do is always just, just meet them again in person. So I actually went to the Hong Kong film market shortly after. And that one was a little bit cheaper. And then we had money saved up for Singapore. Coming back, going to Ocean Bar, that's when we were meeting and, like, hanging out. And mm. I was working there. And I was also working with this. So you already, before Ocean Bar, you also went to Singapore for, like, a little trip? And yeah. Okay, cool. I was, it was kind of like, you know, before you get married, you go on the dates, right? <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> I had to I had to keep meeting up with these people, so um, I went to Hong Kong and s and met with the contacts again. Uh, while I was still doing the same thing, I was pitching other ideas to other companies, making as many connections as I could. And some of these connections, even though they're not the ones that did a hundred yards, I still met them and I still have them in my Rolodex, you know. And we still keep up, and I find out what they're doing, and you know, see if they can help me out on a project. Um, but it, it took a couple meetings. Like I had to go to to Hong Kong, meet with them again follow up with them. They're like, yeah, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's let's really move forward on this. And then they invited me back to Singapore, not on a market, but just come back, uh, you know, in a couple months. This is the company that offered you the job? Yeah. Okay. And then that's when I found out I had the, you know, I was working with the company. They told me over the phone that I was going to be working as the U.S. liaison for meetings and things like that. And then they brought me over to just basically live in Singapore and, 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 and work with their group on another project, which was actually about human trafficking. Um, mm in Cambodia and then I ended up uh, we ended up kind of working on 100 100 yards amongst other things while we were trying to you know package and put the team together was this uh, uh, one of Sherman's companies or was he involved in it we didn't mean Sherman until later on got it yeah he came in and as a, just an investor as another producer and this was like his I think his he was working in global finance and this was his first like test into film so we were kind of uh, we all came together we all ended up working together and you know looking for a director um trying to find the right director for it because other than interviewing we all had this idea that we wanted to of the story we wanted to tell and um you know even though it was it was some of it was my most of it was my idea the the changes they wanted to make was just to make it a co-production how could it take place in the philippines and in the u.s or how can we use a u.s actor how can we make it a co-production um how can we tell this story which at the time i wrote it to take place in montana um, I just changed it to the Philippines, and we just had to make some story changes there. How old were you when you guys moved to Mo from Montana to California? Mm, oh, from California to Montana? I was mm, Yeah, 18. from Mon you, you were living in Montana. Yeah, I was moved 18. to California, right? No, no, no. I was in California. Oh, I went to Montana for a year when I was 18. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, but your parents moved from Montana? No, from Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. So w how were you born? Yeah, I was born in California. Okay, cool. Yeah. So Colleen or any of the older siblings? They were, you know, they were little girls. And, you know, they were so they, yeah. okay. And, uh, yeah, they were little. And I, my two older sisters, they were little. Uh, you know, they were, I think they were like, you know, eight and nine. So they remember a little bit of the Philadelphia and then the parents. Are, that's yeah. Cool. Funny. Got yeah. It. So Was there anybody from else from the s your siblings in uh, film or acting or anything like that? No. Nah. Other than Colleen and oh Colleen last, was in, last yeah, movie. She was in, she was in drama and she only wanted, she studied at Growlings and always wanted to be an actress but never did. And that's why I was like, well, you got it in you, so <laughs> get in there. Um, Very cool. So, uh, shoot, where was it? Yeah, so looking Singapore. at Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. Now they gave you a job? Yeah. We're coming to, you know, they gave me a place to live out there. Um, so uh, it all happened. It wasn't like you backpack everything. And no, just I mean, like I was working with you at Ocean Bar for a little bit. And that's when we were talking. And I'm like, yeah, I'm working with Singapore. And what was your decision factor? Like, yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to move to Singapore. And when did you break it down to the family and said, I'm going to move, you know, what's it, 10,000 miles across the 
Well, I just wanted to, well, one, it was an adventure. It was something different. Um, I was working, like I said, I was working for the one company, uh, driving to LA every day, working in a cubicle office. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, it would be the same story if I worked for a major company. Mm -hmm. So I wanted the adventure. I wanted to go do something different. Mm -hmm. Um, and at this time, hundred yards is being somewhat developed. You guys are formulating the finishing the script and yeah. getting pre-production. And at this point, did you had an idea that you might be the director or that? You no, no. Like I said, I was just, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to go like what Wayne Gretzky says. I, I want to go where the puck is going to be, not where it's at. And mm. so I've, I, I saw Singapore as an opportunity um, that, you know, their, their industry is coming up and I kind of want to go and be a part of that. Um, well, yeah. So uh, going into back into the film, we were, uh, you know, we were trying to come up with uh, ideas for directors. Either they were overcharging us or, you know, their fee was way too high. Uh, for our budget, or they really wanted to change the story to something different. And one reason I like this company and the company like this, the idea is because we all wanted to tell that story. Um, and so going through all of that, they kind of just looked at me and they're like, well, hey, you wrote the script, you know the story, you know the characters, why don't you just direct it? Hmm. And um, I was, <laughs> I had that moment where I was just like, I, I don't know if I can or not, but I was just like, man, this is my dream. This is what I've always been wanting to do. This is what I was talking about, like why I got into Chapman's creative producing. Like this is the exact same vision that yeah, I had. Yeah, you're like, I'm not turning you were this just, down. Yeah, that you're asking me about, like, did I have that vision? I'm like, yeah, I did. I had that game plan in my mind and it was playing out. Um, and so, uh, you know, we didn't go with another writer. We just kind of all worked together on the notes, like, from other producers and then I just kind of structured it from the notes and I ended up uh, sitting in there and directing and I brought on a, uh, a co-director to help me out mm -hmm. because I wanted somebody with experience to, to kind of like spot me while I was doing this and uh, he was great and his the reason why I wanted to bring him on because I was going to do it solo but the reason why I really wanted to bring on this co-director is because he did have the same vision as me and he wasn't like the other directors that wanted to kind of completely change the entire story and a lot of people Technically, just, you know, they didn't have faith in faith-based films at the time, <laughs> but there were a couple that were coming out and making a lot of money back, showing that the audience actually wants to hear a good story, you know, um, you know, a story about faith and right they want to have hope. So, and my, uh, my partners, they're pastors and I'm, uh, you know, I've been, I've been raised on my faith and there's a lot of reasons why I got through the tough times in life. Uh, so we really wanted to make sure that that happened. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, we ended up going to the Philippines. We went to an island in Cebu. Uh, we casted some actors out.